Welcome to Tech Talks. Tech Talks is a series of short webinars focused on features and best practices within use cases. Our experts help create these tips and tricks, and we want you to leverage them in your daily role. We value you, our customer, and want to help you continue in your Splunk journey. Our platform edition of Tech Talks today is focused on anomaly detection with Splunk machine learning. I'm Jessica Davlin, a Senior Product Marketing Manager for the Splunk platform. I'm joined here today by my colleague, Anthony Tellez, who will be showing you a couple of demos later in this talk. We are excited to be here today to talk about what's possible with the latest release of Splunk's Machine Learning Toolkit, or MLTK for short, specifically when it comes to outlier and anomaly detection. The Splunk Machine Learning Toolkit app delivers the capability to operationalize machine learning models on your data in Splunk and is available free of charge with any Splunk Enterprise or Splunk Cloud license. Let's briefly cover off on the agenda. Today, we are going to talk about a few things, including experimenting and modeling your Splunk data using Splunk's MLTK. We'll then walk through two great demos of the MLTK Smart Outlier Detection Assistant. And then finally, we'll cover some additional resources available to help you take advantage of machine learning in Splunk. Our team will also be available for Q&A throughout the Tech Talk using the Q&A feature. If you are watching a recorded version of this webinar, please continue the conversation through the Splunk Community website for any additional follow-up questions. Machine learning can offer great benefits. Many organizations are already tracking and monitoring their event and metric data using Splunk, and Splunk offers the ability to experiment with and model that data with machine learning for your IT, security, and DevOps use cases. Machine learning can help you derive more insights from this data so you can ultimately make faster, more informed decisions. Using the machine learning toolkit, our guided workflows and assistance can help you build different models and help you detect anomalies, among other things. Specifically, the MLTK includes a family of smart assistants that were purpose-built for citizen data scientists to experiment with common ML patterns in Splunk data, including forecasting, clustering, and outlier detection. The MLTK's simple interface removes barriers for ML exploration, simplifying data analysis, and providing ML access to users without a formal data science education or title. These smart assistants and other guided workflows available with MLTK cover top business use cases, such as monitoring security logs to predict potential threats. Today, Anthony will focus on one of these assistants and show you how to apply the Smart Outlier Detection Assistant to identify and detect anomalies in both your IT and security data. So with that, I'll turn it over to him. Thanks, Jessica. Before I show you the demo, I want to take a moment to provide a high-level overview of how to build a model. Generally, you follow a scientific methodology, determining your business goal, and then scoping and exploring the relevant data needed to solve that business case. Training algorithms and evaluating the solution are about 20% of the workload that a data scientist normally would perform. With the machine learning toolkit, we simplify this process and allow them to not only train the algorithm and evaluate the solution, but to operationalize and deploy that model against their business objectives. I'm going to open Splunk Enterprise to now demonstrate the security use case first, followed by an IT use case, leveraging the Smart Outlier Detection Assistant in the MLTK. Security use case, we're going to use the Smart Outlier Detection Assistant to identify anomalous logons. And this is going to leverage the density function algorithm, which supports partial fit. 
In this set of data, we have aggregated successful logons for u different user accounts, and we split those apart by the account type. So are they uh, service accounts or are they normal user accounts? When we get to the learn step, we're going to select our daily total field, which is our aggregated number of successful authentications during a 24-hour period for that user. The split by is used when I know I have different groups within my population. So in this case, I know I have service accounts and I, have, I know I have user accounts. And the reason I'm splitting is because I expect that these different account types are going to have different baselines. In your enterprise, you may have different account types that are based on AD groups or job function. So this is something to consider as you create baselines. You want to be able to split apart logically the different groups that exist within your enterprise. So you can baseline similar people or devices using a logical grouping. The distribution type of auto will automatically detect what the shape of the data is. If you know what the shape of your data is, like it's a normal distribution or an exponential distribution, you can select that. When you're looking at more than one group, however, that will apply to all groups. So the best recommendation I can provide is use auto because it'll, it can determine whether the account type of service is Gaussian KDE or the user account is a normal distribution and encode that into the model file. Lastly, we have the tolerance threshold, and this is used to determine um, how sensitive do you want the algorithm to be to outliers. In this case, I've moved it slightly to the left because I want to see more global outliers. I don't necessarily care about the local outliers if I had moved it more to the right. And so I've changed this from the default, which is 0 0.01 to 0 0.001. So I will see a little bit less anomalies when I click this detect outliers button. And so in the background, this is going to kick off a search job that's going to go ahead and take this data, it's going to send it to the algorithm, and it's going to produce a model file for us. And that model file is going to be used to present a visualization that will tell us how many outliers were detected. So using that tolerance threshold, 251 outliers were detected, and if I click this split, on the chart mode, it's going to split up the two different populations. So I have normal users and I also have service account users. And the baselines are going to be different, which means anybody who's logging in more than four times per day that's a normal user is considered an anomaly. On the service account side, anybody who's logging in more than 48 times in a day is considered an anomaly. So you can see how by splitting those up, now I have different baselines and different metrics for determining who's an anomaly and who's not an anomaly based on my population. If I go ahead and click Next, I get a summary of the model. And I can see that the distribution types are actually different for these two different groups. So this is a good reason why you want to use Auto. It will automatically detect what's a proper distribution and then it's going to use the proper thresholding mechanism for determining whether something is an anomaly or not an anomaly. The outlier analysis tab will give us some information related to the users or the account types that have been detected as anomalies. So in this case, user has 199, service account has 52. If I click Save and Next, this will allow me to update the experiment and save it. And when I do that, I can now publish the model to another app. So if I want to move this out of the machine learning toolkit into another app and move that app into prod, that's how you would do that. You can move this from your dev instance to your prod instance. You can also create alerts based on this search. So taking this model, I can go ahead and use it on new data and have it scheduled to run and then alert me when new anomalies are detected automatically. And then I can trigger some kind of alert action for that, like create a nodal event in enterprise security if you are a subscriber of that, or simply send an email or create a Slack alert. The other thing I can do is schedule training. And when I schedule that training, that would be to update the model automatically. So I can run this every Monday at 6 a.m. 
Um, and then I can also trigger actions based on that. So I can create alerts to say, hey, uh, the new training job finished. Or I can send an email that lets me know, hey, that job that you scheduled was successfully completed. For the IT example, we're going to use the Smart Outlier Detection Assistant to identify anomalously high web transactions leveraging the density function algorithm. So this data has already been pre-cleaned and aggregated for us. And what we see in these columns are the app servers. So we have app server 1, app server 2, app server 3, all the way through 11. And then the time. And so these are in one minute increments. How many transactions occurred on that server? So because this data has already been pre-chewed or, or pre-processed for us, all we have to simply do is select the field we want to analyze. So in this case, we want to look at app server 1 which is the column that has all the numerical data. And we're not going to do a split by. And the reason for that is there's no logical grouping in these servers, like a server type. They're all kind of the same. And so there's no reason for us to do a split by in this case. The distribution of type of auto we're going to leave because we don't know what the distribution for app one is. And so we're going to let the algorithm figure it out. For the tolerance threshold, I've already put a custom parameter in here, and that's primarily because I want to look at global outliers. I don't want to see local outliers for this particular uh, app server. And one thing to note is if you click the SPL button on the right, it will show you how to write this search if you want to create your own dashboard or run this search separately and play around with the parameters or try it out on new data. So when I click that detect outliers button, it's going to take all the data that's in column app one and start looking for the anomalies in there and creating a baseline. And so in this case, it's found 32 outliers and those 32 outliers exist um, basically above 324. So Within a one minute period, if I've had more than 324 transactions, that would be considered anomalous. And we can see actually on this graph that at one point there were 1,700 transactions, which would be you know, anomalous for a one minute period. When the bulk of our transactions are anywhere from 8 to 300. So that increase tells me that at, at some point something failed either in my IT infrastructure on the load balancer side or there was some kind of issue where app server one was processing most of the transactions. And when I look at the model file, it gives us some additional information like the distribution type is Gaussian KDE, and the mean number of transactions for this server is 76. So that gives me a pretty good idea about how many transactions should I expect to see on this server during uh, a normal time period, a normal one minute time period. The other thing that this page will show me is if I go to the outlier analysis, this only works if I have a split by. So if I've maybe if I had had some additional labels in here, like the type of transaction that was occurring on the server, I might see that information here. But in this case, we don't have that logical split. So it's going to go ahead and just provide the aggregated number to the user. It's not going to provide any other type of outlier analysis because we don't have any other uh, data point or field to key off of. And when I click Save Experiment, this will allow me to publish this model. So if I want to publish this model to another app, I can do that. All the other things from the security walkthrough also. Now that you've seen how easy the machine learning toolkit is to use, let me tell you why you should get started today. Mean time to resolution, or MTTR, measures how long it takes for a customer 
to respond to a breach or to an incident. The effective or the existing parameter for this measurement for most customers who are, don't have a logging platform or a SIM are only able to detect these types of events after they occur, meaning it's re reactive. Effective is the basic value proposition of Splunk. I can write automated rules to detect things like hashes and signatures or HTTP event codes greater than 400. And these are rule-based searches that Splunk Enterprise allows you to create and automatically detect when these things occur in your environment. The proactive approach is when you leverage machine learning to reduce the MTTR and you focus on telemetry. So finding anomalies in real time allows you to not only get ahead of the event before it becomes a problem, but identify trends and patterns in your data that you normally wouldn't find if you were lo looking at a purely signature-based type of detection. The predictive mode of M ML is where you've modeled the KPIs and the telemetry and you add another layer of regression on top of your anomaly detection to be able to find what are called leading indicators. And those leading indicators then allow you to mitigate the cost of the impact. And when we talk about what is the cost of the impact to the business, you can think of that as an exponential function of time. So the longer an event occurs, like an API service is down or an attacker is in your infrastructure, the more potential damage or likely damage occurs to your revenue or to your business. We hope you found these demos helpful. If you're looking to get started or learn more, we have some great resources available for you, including documentation, blogs, and additional presentations. These links will be provided in a follow-up email sent after this talk. Thank you again for your time today, and I'll hand it over to Jessica to wrap up the conversation. Great. Thank you, Anthony. One additional resource I'll highlight is our incredible community of Splunk users on our community site, which has recently been refreshed. I encourage everyone to take a look. Here you can browse the Q&A section and search for Splunk MLTK, visit the new discussion section for Platform Tech Talks, and check out Splunk Ideas, where you can submit suggestions for new product enhancements. Thank you again. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedules to join us today. Please tune back in for future Tech Talks. We're excited to share this series with you.